Welcome, Pastor Dillon. Thank you, sir. Thank you, thank you. Matthew 6, 38 says, Give and it shall be given unto you. That is a very simple statement. Something I feel like we all should very well understand. Amen? We should. I'm going to do something I don't think I've ever done, but I'm going to do it tonight. And I'm going to reiterate a little bit of what Pastor Tyler used in tithes and offering this morning. Again, about Abraham and Isaac, about how he was the father of faith. But one thing that stuck with me when he was sitting here um, teaching about the tithes and offering is the fact that he said that he told the people, he said, me and the lad, stay here. Me and the lad, we're going to go up here, but we will return. You know, again, if we believed in that one scripture, give and it shall be given unto you, we would believe and have that faith like Abraham to say, you know, I will lay down my Isaac, my dollar. Because ain't that something we hold dear? Don't we all hold our, our wallets dear? I can prove it because as soon as I started talking, everybody sat down on it. As soon as I said, give and it shall be given unto me, given unto you, who? We all took a seat. Like, what? Well, we know what's about to happen here. <laughs> but listen, we're, we're trying to teach y'all about giving in faith, okay? It's something we do hold dear, just as Abraham was. He prayed earnestly, hard for his Isaac to the point he got so focused on his Isaac, that's why it never happened. But when he truly, finally understood all I need is Jesus, Amen. that's when he received his promise. That's when he received his Isaac. And now here comes a test where God says, Give me your Isaac. And what did Abraham do? He did just that. He taken it, but he went a step further in his faith and he said, y'all stay right here because me and the lad will come back. What if we looked at Isaac as again, when we give, I know it's going to come right back. Amen. I can trust God with what he's given me because I know it's coming right back. I know he's coming right back. So why do I need to hold on to something? It's not mine anyways. If we all took our last breath and left this world, nothing you have is going with you. We don't truly own anything we have. Once we pass on and God calls us on, it's just going on to the next person. So again, why can't we have that faith that again, I know that God says, if I give and I obey him, I know he'll give it back. I know he'll give in return. Amen. I want to read one more thing right here. Now, I just had you. Where'd you go? I know it's right where I left it, but gosh. Then again, I could I could I could have messed up, huh? Oh, it's about um, if a son asks for bread, you know, it's right here. Where's it? I, I can't I know where it is. Did I? Did I, I uh, anyways, I'll just say it. I was gonna read it. It was gonna sound better reading it, but okay. Look. The eyes don't always work. We live by faith, not by sight, okay? I knew, I, yeah, that, I mean, I know. I keep all of daddy's old preacher Bibles. I've never got a new one or nothing like that. It's just, I take all the hand-me-downs. They said, well, I'm about to get a new one. I'll take that. <laughs> but I'm going to read it. All right. Luke 11, verse 11. And I'm going to go through 13. If a son shall ask bread of any of you that is a father, will he give him a stone? Or if he ask a fish, will he for a fish give him a serpent? Now this is coming from me. Every time I've ever asked God for a fish, he has blessed me with a fish. That's coming from a fisherman, okay? I had to go fishing. I had to go do something. I had to put action with it when I asked him, okay? All right. If ye then, being evil, know how to give good gifts unto your children, how much more shall your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to them that ask him? Now, this part right here got me. It says, how much more shall your heavenly Father give, not to them that ask him, but it says, give the Holy Ghost to them that ask him. Amen. See, here's the thing. Just like we talk all about in Malachi 3, 8, and 10 about how will a man rob God? Tithes and offerings. You know, again, everything connected to God. Everything is. That's why, again, I brought up about Abraham. Here he is, the father of faith. Yes, he, under he wanted his Isaac, but he understood that I need Jesus more than I do Isaac. Because I didn't get my Isaac, my promise, without first understanding that I need Jesus. Amen. Amen? 
So here it is again. I got to realize I need him more than anything. And when I understand that and I obey in my giving, God is going to give the gifts to the Holy Spirit. When I obey his words, then he gives them to me. That's how it goes from God the Father to the Holy Spirit in us to then us. That's how he gets it to us. But it's all relying on whether we obey that scripture. We start off with Luke 6, 38. Give and it shall be given unto you. Everybody say it with me. Give and it shall be given unto me. If we sat there and truly believed that, I promise y'all, we would not have a problem or trouble giving when God says to give. And what you should give, you know, that's totally, that's totally up to you. It's totally up to you. But when it comes to the tithes, that's the one thing he commands, 10%. That's the one commandment. Everything else, the offerings, that is told between you and God. I'm not up here to tell you what your specific amount. I'm just here to encourage you to have faith when you give and trust God that he's going to do exactly what his word says. Amen? Amen. So let's have that faith as Abraham. Amen? Hallelujah. Let's lay down our Isaac because we know he's going to give him right back. Praise Amen. God. To Jesus be the glory. Amen. Word of the Lord. Uh, yes. He said he'll give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him. Well, a lot of people are asking for this present and that present and even from God. God, give me this gift and these gifts. Amen. Many even seek the Lord and I'm not telling you not to do it because 1 Corinthians 14 1 says desire spiritual gifts. Amen. And then he starts listing them off. But somebody say, desire the gift. In Acts 1 and 5, Jesus said, not many days hence, I'll baptize you with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Acts 1 and 8 said, you'll receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you'll be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem, Samaria, Judea, and the uttermost parts of this earth. Jesus told them, the gift I want to baptize you with is a person. Somebody say the Holy Ghost. He is the Spirit of Christ. He is the one that put Jesus in a virgin womb. He, she conceived by the Holy Ghost, Matthew 1, 20. He is the one, according to Romans 8 and 11, that quickened the three-day dead old. Come on, somebody, body of Christ, and raised him out of Joseph's borrowed tomb. I don't know but one person that borrowed a tomb rest of us by them but somebody say it was the Holy Ghost that did it hallelujah somebody say we need to be asking for him the gift the gifts of the spirit amen there's nine of them read it outlined in the word of God in 1 Corinthians amen chapter 12 but those are the gifts plural somebody say there's only one gift and that's him, the Holy Spirit. Come on, let's lift our hands tonight and let's do just what that scripture says. Lord, we ask for the Holy Ghost. We need the Holy Ghost because all the gifts are his. We need the giver, the gift, Holy Spirit, the person. Because if we're going to walk in his divine enablement and power, and we must have this endowment to endure to the end. Holy Ghost, we can't have it without you. It is not by might nor by power, but it by my spirit, saith the Lord of hosts, Zechariah 4 and verses 6. Hallelujah. Acts 5 32 said, We're witnesses of these things, and so is the Holy Ghost, whom God hath given to them that obey him. Come on, lift both hands with your heart unto God tonight and tell him, say, Holy Ghost, help me obey you. Because I know that's how I receive you as I obey you. Amen. Somebody say it's so simple. Ask for him. And then just obey him. Do what he says to do. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Because I'm telling you what, if you're going to receive anything from God, you can't receive it apart from God. That's just the thing. A lot of folks are trying to receive things from God, but they don't want to receive him. Amen. Praise God. Somebody say, let that be your highest prayer every day. Don't start off asking God for stuff and things. He knows what you got need of before you ask for him. Matthew 6 and 8. Amen. He already knows. So prayer ain't asking God, you know, for something that he's unaware and don't already know about. When you study Matthew 6, a lot of people skip on to verses 9. I was in my yard and Tootsie, my little dog, she was doing a little side look at me like I was talking about this morning. She couldn't figure me out. Amen. Some of y'all do that in the spirit. I watch you in the spirit sometimes do that when I say that. But in Matthew 6 and 8, it says your father knows what you have need of before you ask him. 
Somebody say your father. Somebody say that's personal. Now verses 9, Jesus begins to teach his disciples how to pray. And he said, pray after this manner, our father. But before he ever taught them anything about our father, which was corporate prayer, us praying for one another and praying for this or that or whatever, he said, your father. Somebody say that's personal. Somebody say God made prayer for himself. So before I start asking our father, before I start praying for all these things and all this stuff, I need to come to him as my father. And I already know he knows what I got need of. So I'm not going to bring my need to him first. I'm going to express my need for him first. I need you. Somebody say if we'll seek him first. Seek him first. His righteousness. There's the person. All these other things be added unto us. Matthew 6, 33. But a lot of times we miss that. We skip past that. And we start asking for the things. Somebody say God knows the things we need. But we need to know we need him above all. So when you pray, somebody say pray for him. Somebody's thinking, God need prayer? No, 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 no. Hallelujah. Amen. We need to pray to him. Because if you're going to get anything from him, somebody say you got to have him first. And a lot of people bypass him trying to get things from him. And they just go rushing right in praying for all the things. So let's do it one more time tonight. Holy Ghost, we ask for you. Oh, that's the gift we need this Christmas season. We need the Holy Ghost. We need the person. Because when the person comes, the power follows. When him, the giver, who is the gift, when he shows up, the gifts, oh, they'll follow us. We don't follow them. They follow us. We just follow him. Lord, we ask for you tonight. We do what Luke eleven thirteen, 13, as we heard Pastor Dylan read in our hearing. We ask for the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Thank you, Spirit of God. We need you. We need need you yes we do in Jesus mighty name and the church said amen you need salvation don't do like the religions of the world that are false do they seek salvation somebody say seek the savior he's already purchased your salvation at the cross Come on. You need deliverance? Don't seek deliverance. Seek him who's the deliverer. Because when you find him, you'll find what he does. Yeah. Come on. He said, look unto me and be ye saved. I'm God and there's none else. Isaiah 45, 22. Joel 2, 32 said, whoever calls on the name of the Lord, they'll be delivered. Who will? Those who call on the Lord. He's the deliverer. He hath delivered us and he doth deliver us and he will yet deliver us. 2 Corinthians 1, 10. Somebody say he's a deliverer yesterday, today, and tomorrow, and forever. Hallelujah. You need healing? Seek the healer. Amen. Somebody say, whatever you need, you find it when you seek him. Jeremiah 29, 13 says, you will seek me and you'll find me when you search for me with all your heart. Amen. So that lets you know God says, I'll, I might hide so you'll seek, but once you start seeking, I'll jump out from hiding. <laughs> and I'll show myself. Then verse 14 of Jeremiah 29, he said, I'll be found of you and turn your captivity. In other words, when I find God, I find the liberty. I find the freedom. I find everything I was looking for, trying to get from him, I found it in him. Colossians 2.10 says, in Christ you're complete. Somebody say, in Christ I'm fulfilled. In Christ I find what it is I need. Amen? You won't find it, old fat Buddha. Come on, somebody. You won't find it in Confucius. All you'll find is confusion in Confucius. Somebody say, you won't find it in a bottle. You won't find it in a syringe. You won't find it in another relationship. Come on, somebody. With another personality, a person of the opposite sex in this world. Somebody say, you can only find it in Jesus. Oh, glory to God. So seek him. And what you need will seek you. Somebody say, that's the order. That's how it works. Amen.